When it comes to outdoor clothing, Gore-Tex is probably one of the most useful inventions today. First manufactured in 1978, it's lightweight, it provides good protection and keeps the wearer warm. So how does this simple fabric manage to do so much? Gore-Tex clothing is made using two layers of material. The outer layer is often nylon or polyester combined with a Gore-Tex membrane beneath. This membrane has over 1.4 billion pores per square centimeter. They're too small for rain to come in, but large enough to let steam or sweat vapors out. The first step is fashion, and a designer creates a template from which to cut the cloth. This software helps cut the material as efficiently as possible to avoid waste. And whilst the designer is drawing up the plans for the new jacket, her assistant is down in the warehouse selecting the right shade of material for the outer layer. The designer, meanwhile, is printing up her cloth template ready for the cutting process. With the cloth and the template together, the seamstress can cut out the different pieces required to make a jacket. The template is clipped into place and this provides the cutter with a guide for shaping the cloth beneath. With everything cut to size, the tailoring work can now begin. There are over 200 parts in total, but it's not all material. There are plenty of zips, buttons and toggles too. Slowly, the different pieces come together, including the Gore-Tex membrane. Although that is the real working part of this jacket, it's important the outer layer can withstand the kind of conditions it will face. The first test seen here is for abrasion. Long-term wear and tear is something any outdoor jacket will have to resist. This device rubs the material against a rough surface. Each rub is the same as about 12 hours of wear. Each piece of cloth must endure at least 87,000 rubs. Light damage means this material appears to have passed and should remain waterproof. As well as abrasion, the material's strength is also tested. A cloth sample is loaded into a machine that will stretch it to breaking point. The force required to tear it is then measured to assess the material's quality. Meanwhile, the finishing touches are being added to the jacket. One problem with sewing Gore-Tex is the stitching. Water can get in through these holes, which are huge compared to the material's microscopic pores. However, a liner is heated into place, which seals the stitching. First developed in the late 70s by Mr. Gore, the material with the unique one-way breathing system has the added bonus of being lightweight. But how can they test if it's waterproof? They use pressure. If water seeps through the fabric, it means the material offers no protection against rain, and the wearer would end up cold and wet in a storm. This is clearly a fail. But when the Gore-Tex fabric is exposed to the same test, although the force applied to both samples is the same, the difference is clear. Even when bulging under the pressure, the Gore-Tex remains watertight. The jacket is now almost complete. It only needs a few extras. Buttons are a helpful addition. The jacket may be waterproof, but if it's not done up, it won't offer much protection. Finally, quality controller examiners run one last test. By pumping the jacket full of air, they can check that the seams are secure. When the work's done, this jacket will resist the elements, keeping the dedicated rambler dry on the inside, even when the weather is at its worst on the outside.